This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, brush up on your old ones, whatever you want to learn. You can learn to play guitar, create your own beats, make dance remixes, whatever you want. Check out this one I liked. Learn how to master songs like a pro all from home with award-winning engineer Young Guru. And best of all, there are no ads because who wants those? The first thousand people to use the link will get a 30% off annual Skillshare premium membership. Thank you and on with the show. So, turns out that Lil Nas X is like a real pop star. I got the horses in the back. I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't really expect that to happen. For all that is good and great and groundbreaking about Old Town Road, let's call it what it is. It's a shit post that got out of control. I have a whole separate show about what happens when your first song is a really big novelty hit. It's usually not good. Like, who wants a sequel to a meme? Did you know that the Numa Numa guy made a second video? No, of course you didn't. No one cared. That's kind of where I expected Lil Nas X was going. And yes, he's had a couple minor hits since Old Town Road, but mostly I figured he'd end up in the same cultural spot where we put Gangnam Style, Harlem Shake, Friday, and so on. Welcome to Montero. I caught it bad just today. Add another tally to my wrong predictions because Lil Nas X managed to find a way to cause controversy again and discourse himself all the way to a second number one with Montero parentheses call me by your name. Things have calmed down since then and his second biggest hit has nestled comfortably in the low end of the top 10 but for a while there it was pretty crazy. It's a very provocative piece of work. For one thing the song is like so gay. That's a neutral description obviously. It's a song about a sexual relationship with another man. And that's nothing compared to the video where Lil Nas X chooses to be condemned to hell for his gayness. And then he takes a stripper pole to Hades and gives Satan a lap dance and then takes his throne. I consider myself pretty jaded, but I admit, I have not seen that before. Like maybe there's a gay death metal band from Norway that's done this, but Lil Nas X is a mainstream pop star. Little kids know who he is. So this is pretty remarkable. But whatever, you're here for my take on this song. I don't know why my opinion matters to you, but since so many of you asked, do I like this song? Um, not really. But you know what, ask me again in a few months. The fact is none of Lil Nas X's songs have hit me the first time. Old Town Road didn't click for me until the remix, and Panini and Holiday, those didn't work for me at all at first. But after a few months I heard them and I'm like, eh, actually those are all right. So give me a little time, I guess. I don't know, I gave it a full month already, I waited for the controversy to die down, maybe I still need more time with it before it unlocks. But for the time being, I just cannot really shake the suspicion that Lil Nas X is always going to be an artist who's more fun to talk about than to listen to. Like, he's very interesting, and he's very smart. Like, earlier when I said Old Town Road was a shitpost that got out of control, that's, that's not actually true. That was my first impression, but I now realize that was completely wrong. Old Town Road was a shitpost that he was in complete control of the entire time. Like, he played that whole controversy very carefully, he was very savvy in how he promoted and talked about it. And he's done that for Call Me By Your Name, too. He trolled all the right people with the video. There were a lot of very religious people who were just shocked and appalled. There was a whole thing I didn't really get where he was selling satanic shoes and that just made people angrier. Bunch of devil worshiping wicked nonsense, pentagram wearing on your Nike tennis shoe 666. You think I'm gonna stand for that? You've lost your mind. You Gasp, he's satanic. He's promoting Satan worship. Y'all did notice that he killed Satan, right? <laughs> what do you want him to do? Not kill Satan? Jeez. Like, on some level, I think religious conservatives should be offended, because it's trying to offend them, but... I, I don't think they really get why this song and video is insulting to them, which makes the trolling even funnier. It's the message about how religious homophobia makes gay kids decide they'd rather be eternally damned than feel guilty. Which... I'm sorry, but this really isn't hard to get. Like, if anything, the problem with the video is that it's too obvious. You don't have to be a scholar on biblical imagery here, like a garden with a snake in it. What could it represent? But instead, the fundamentalists are all like, 
up in arms about devil worship like it's the 80s? God, I should be a fundamentalist. I would be so much better at it. And a few weeks after the video dropped, he made an even bigger troll by announcing that everyone had to enjoy the new song right now because it was going to be removed from all platforms. That was a complete lie, obviously, but it was a really entertaining one. As promotional stunts go, at least it doesn't reek of desperation like Justin Bieber trying to force a viral dance into existence. But all this hasn't really translated to me enjoying his music. Like when he dropped his first EP, Pitchfork asked if Lil Nas X even likes music. And that seemed to hurt his feelings, but I, I think it's a fair question. For me, all of his output has seemed like scraps of music. Incomplete fragments of a song. Like, it barely crosses the two minute mark. It's the only song I've ever heard of where the extended remix didn't clear three minutes. Two minutes and 50 seconds? Jeez, wrap it up already. What is this, a fish concert? This is taking forever. Lil Nas X was originally on Twitter as a Nicki Minaj stan account. And now that he's an artist himself, you can tell he was influenced a lot by Nicki's aesthetic. He wants the big over-the-top image, but musically he doesn't sound a thing like Nicki, for better or worse. He doesn't have Nicki's immediately ear-catching voice or technical skill as a rapper. Arguably, he's not a rapper at all. So it's funny to see this big, elaborate, controversial video for this extremely short, even unfinished sounding song. It just feels wildly unbalanced to me. It's like if the Ramones performed with Bon Jovi's lasers and pyrotechnics. So what I'm saying is that I have reasons to be suspicious, as I always am for artists whose music seems secondary to their appeal. But in this case, I think I'm willing to put that aside. Even if I'm not sure I really vibe with the song, I recognize that there is clearly a lot more going on here. So a few months into Old Town Road Mania, Lil Nas X came out as Ye. This was something that I didn't see coming, but now that I think about it, there were signs. Old Town Road is a depiction of traditional heterosexual masculinity that is not super convincing in hindsight. My life is a movie, right in it, boobies. I love boobies, who doesn't? Also, I did mention that he was a Nicki Minaj stan, right? It wasn't shocking. But shocking or not, him being out of the closet is a big deal. Hip hop has not historically been very gay friendly. So a gay rapper who's as famous as he is, that matters. Or just being a black gay man at all, like that's a big deal too. How many of those have there been in music? Prince pretended to be, but he wasn't. There were a couple disco guys, but they weren't nearly as big. You have a few who were bigger, but they didn't come out till way after the fact. The only ones who are really in the same ballpark are Frank Ocean and Tyler the Creator, who are big, but in different ways. Your mom never listened to Channel Orange. She might be able to sing Old Town Road. But more importantly, Call Me By Your Name is not just a number one hit by a gay man. It's about having gay sex. That has never happened. Like, I talk sometimes about how being gay is not a big deal anymore, which is a very straight and sheltered thing to say, I know. But in some ways, it isn't. When Taylor Swift tried to write a gay rights song, my response was, you know, who cares? Where were you when this mattered? But a song about actually doing gay things? That is new. It's even named after a famous gay coming-of-age movie. Like, there is no bullshitting around here. I saw one article calling it the gayest number one hit ever, and a bunch of people respond to him like, what about Born This Way? You can be straight and sing Born This Way. Like, just generally as a positive message of allyship, you can be singing like, I'm straight and you're gay and it's all okay. Like, they performed that song on Glee. I don't know that show, but I have to believe that one of these characters is straight. Maybe. But you sing Call Me By Your Name, you are gay. For the duration of that song, you are gay, it makes no sense otherwise. Like, I guess that's the big thing for me. Like, I've gotten used to hits about how it's okay to be gay, but not any songs about actually being gay. Like, some have tried, but they didn't really manage to go mainstream with it. Others have kept it as subtext. Like, they'll do love songs that are pretty vague about who they're actually addressed to. There's a lot of second-person pronouns. Call Me By Your Name is a gay song that does not care to hide that it's gay, nor does it feel the need to have a positive message. I'm not faced, tell me you're the sin. Like, I am glad that he doesn't feel the need to be positive about it. He can just be out there and piss people off with it, and who cares? Like, he posted something on Twitter about how when he was a kid, he never thought he'd be one of those gays who are all public with their sexuality. And, you know, keeping it low-key is absolutely an option. 
a lot of LGBT pop stars have like this wink wink are they aren't they approach to their gayness or they just buried it all together. Like, if you don't want to know that Michael Stipe or even Tyler the Creator is gay, you absolutely do not have to. You can live in blissful ignorance. That is not the path Lil Nas X chose. But the video is less shocking to me than the song, which is not only quite explicit, but also really sincere. Was hoping I could catch you throwing smiles in my face. Bro, like for all that this kid smothers himself in irony, this is pretty direct about being his feelings about a real relationship. About having intense attraction to a guy who seems like kind of a fuckboy. He's in the closet, he parties too much. Cocaine and drink it with your friends. You live in the dark, boy, I cannot pretend. I don't know if that's a common gay experience, but at least one of my gay friends has described being in this exact scenario to me. So it might be. It was like the most real and the most even vulnerable at times I've ever been like on a song. Like what Lil Nas X being relatable, I, I didn't see that coming. I did not expect this lifelong troll to get real. Perhaps sincerity is the biggest troll of all. Damn it, Lil Nas X, you got me again. So with everything that's pretty amazing about this song, I feel bad that I don't really feel it, because my reasons are entirely surface level. I, I don't hear much of a hook to it, I don't know how to vibe with it, I, I don't really get how you would listen to it, it just doesn't connect for me. But I think one thing I've learned is that sometimes you gotta let your opinion not matter if the song's meant for someone else. Lil Nas X is a gay kid from a small conservative town, I'm a straight guy from the suburbs, I am not the right demographic for this. Like, no shit, you don't feel it. This queer anthem by a black man is not meant for you, Todd. You're... old. Okay, I'm not actually that old for the record, but Lil Nas X makes me feel so old. I like most Gen Z stuff. 100 Gex? They're great. I have no problem understanding them. But Lil Nas X throws me. He makes me worry so much that I'm getting out of touch with the kids. But then I remember I wasn't in touch with the kids when I was a kid, so, you know, there you go. It could just be that the song is bad, and it's overhyped, and it's riding off the video. I'm not saying I don't believe that, but plenty of other people have listened to the song and said that it is, quote, a bop. And to me, it just sounds like a rough demo that's missing half of it. Like, what am I not getting? I think part of it is that I remember a time before the internet, but this kid's entire existence is the internet. I thought I spent too much time online, but Lil Nas X was born online. His DNA is HTML. His parents are animated GIFs. He has never lived in a world with CDs. I think he just listens to music differently than I do. Like Old Town Road got big on TikTok. You know, lots of songs get big on TikTok, but Lil Nas X is the only one who became a pop star on TikTok. And I feel like that has shaped his entire musical philosophy. That's why his songs are so short. Like, songs are getting shorter regardless, but him especially. Doja Cat is also way too online, but her music is fairly normal. Lil Nas X is doing something completely different from anyone else right now. And I can see the positive in that. Like, Lil Nas X may not be like this technical virtuoso like Nicki, but he also doesn't have any of Nicki's most sellout commercial instincts. He is doing things completely differently. There is not another Lil Nas X right now. I respect that he seems to understand what he's doing, even if I don't. <sighs> I just wish he would throw me a bone, because I'd really like to like this kid's music more than I do. Like, couldn't you just make a Max Martin dance song or something? What I'm saying is, couldn't you just be more normal? Oh god, that's a terrible thing to ask! Ah, oh, jeez, is Lil Nas X gonna show up behind me to snap my neck? Maybe I deserve it. Oh, I'm in way over my head. This episode is over. Mm -hmm.